You spoke in relation to funding in relation to that. I suggest you actually have, uh, it's, it's not for me, Chair, but maybe you should bring in uh, the Minister for Finance outgoing or the Minister for Finance ingoing in here uh, to discuss housing. Well, to be helpful to you, Minister, Minister depending on the timing, uh, that is our intention, okay. yes. Because I believe that's probably to get a fulsome picture, and there may be others, by the way, who need to uh, as, as, uh, as well. Um, the, um, the, the other issue um, uh, which was uh, uh, raised, uh, the other issues that were raised, raised by uh, Deputy Daly, sorry, um, in relation to uh, Beaumont, I disagree with you. And by the way, people, human beings can object, uh, that's their right, uh, you know, that's fine. Um, but like, you know, at times I find it absolutely incredible that public representatives, and I say this of all human cry, genuinely, of all human cry, uh, can, for political reasons, uh, shout out and about uh, social housing requirements, or indeed private housing, which creates more stock, which uh, facilitates everything, creates competition and ensures that we have more supply, um, and then go along on the other side. And for many reasons, which I wouldn't agree with, object to the same ones. Right? And I find it incredible. And in many cases, let's call a spade a spade. It's, hypo it's hypocrisy. Um, I'm not saying that in every case, Deputy Daly, that's the case. But there is, I mean, I could list off a whole pile of these. I could list off a range of these across the country, not just in Dublin, where that is the case. Right? In relation to Beaumont, um, there, very little, there is very little uh, social housing in that area. And our guidelines shows, and I agree with you in relation to social mix and the requirements. I, I accept that, and that's the way you should plan for the future. Uh, but within that area, uh, the requirement or the requirement of those uh, houses um, meets the uh, intensity that is professed and what is good practice. And, you know, you can't on the one hand say we need more social housing. You can't on the one hand say we need to get as much social housing as possible for people who are obviously needed, many in, in difficult situations. And then on the other hand say, oh yeah, but not in my backyard, or that it doesn't meet, meet for this requirement, etc. Sorry, et Minister, I have to I'm correct you. About, no, I'm, I'm not talking about you now. But no, but I'm but not let, saying let that. But you're, no, can I just, because you may be misunderstood, and no, the precise point was exactly that you are scapegoating residents and communities for well, well, the housing problem. Well, I'm, for not, no, I'm not because scapegoating anyone. By the way, sorry. Let, let, you're let, let, caricaturing let, what I was saying. No, I'm not caricaturing, because you, you didn't let me finish. Right? <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I am actually speaking next. So okay, I'm, fine. I'm, I'm, just finishing, I'm, I'm going, finishing on yeah. your points. Okay. This is the reason that I, I yeah. can. The, the, um, but the issue here is that also, you've got to remember from my point, or from this department's point of view, it is the local authority who comes forward. And it's the local authority who actually decides. And it's the local authority uh, who um, feels that it is appropriate and the right thing to do. So, I mean, from that point of view, I mean, you know, we have to work with the local authorities to ensure that this uh, happens. And I, for one, and I mean this at the very end in relation to recommendations, I think we do need an issue uh, to decide as a body politic, are we going to support, um, uh, are we going to actually work together in relation to this and not be uh, saying one thing on one side of our mouth and another thing on the other. In relation to rapid build, uh, you asked about rapid build, uh, and I'll be very quick. I think you're using the figures for the, the houses in, um, in uh, Ballymun for, the, for, for a pop and treat for Balbriggan. Um, no. Well, where are you getting the figures from then? Um, but the point being is this, obviously, obviously there is a, a tendering process in relation to this and, and uh, uh, that will all, uh, all uh, uh, come true. But I'm very happy with the uh, rapid build houses. I wanted houses that lasted not 30 years. I wanted houses that lasted longer, 60, 70 years. I wanted an AA rating. And I also wanted to ensure that they were built as quickly as possible. And they are the fastest built houses in the history of this state. And that's the simple fact of the matter. And I actually believe part of the solution to the future is creating the protocol which has been put in place to ensure we can do this in multiple places across the country and there are economies from doing so. Thank you, Deputy. Okay, no problem. No problem. I'm so sorry. No problem. No problem. Um, um, 
do, 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 do. I, maybe, maybe you want to take another round. Uh, yes, uh, Minister, there are three uh, further members, and just to members, you might keep an eye on the time. We're resuming at two o'clock, so we really should try and uh, have this session finished by one o'clock. Deputy Butler. Um, thanks, Cahir. Um, thanks, Minister and team, for coming in. Um, <clears throat> just a few quick questions, really. really. Uh, Minister, you said you can't, your department can't control all the pillars or factors around, around the housing. And I, I understand that, but I know um, Deputy Function mentioned a minute ago about the, the rent supplement. Like, I, I represent the people of Waterford City and County, and the, re, the rent supplement in Waterford is um, 520 euro. Um, it, 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 you know, but what I'm, you, know, you, you actually mentioned the fact that you, your department your department can't control all the pillars or factors around housing, but that is one of the, that is one of the issues, because you can't get a house in, in that area for less than 650, 700. So I, I think that's, that's one stream that there will have to be joined up thinking between both departments. Um, the, second, the second thing I want to talk about is um, we, we had the chief exaf, exec of Roscommon County Council in on, on Tuesday. And he pointed out that local authorities are not developers. And I quote, even if we had the resources to build on our lands, the regulations state that we can only build 10 to 15 percent for social housing. Now, that's what he said here on Tuesday. And I'm very, very worried about that because if the, department are putting most, if the department are putting most of their eggs into the county councils to supply housing, and he's stating as chief, as, as chief exec of... Um, the County and City Managers Association, that they can only build 10 to 15 per cent for social housing. I'd be very concerned about that. Um, thirdly, I'd also like to say, um, and this is something I've been spouting about for the last couple of years, as a short-term fix, do you see the merit in extending current social houses that, that would be County Council stock to meet family demands as against waiting two years to move them into another house? Now, I'm talking about extending houses that are not for health-specific problems. Just, you know, um, that, that's, that's one thing I think should de definitely be looked at. It would be a quicker fix. Um, another thing I'd like your opinion on, I feel there was a huge opportunity missed in the Strategic Investment Fund to support social housing. Uh, the fund is going to spend £750 million of its current £3 billion cash balance this, before the end of 2016 on a range of projects. And I think they missed the opportunity to invest some of that money into social housing. And finally, I welcome your comments at the end of what you suggest would sorry, make a just, difference. Sorry, I just missed the point. Who did you say? Um, the Strategic Investment Fund. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. There's billions in that. Yeah, there's three billion. And, 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 and they're no, going there is, though. Yeah. There's actually, three, there's actually three billion in the fund, and there's 750 million allocated for a range of projects. But the Minister, Minister Newland, I know we will hopefully we'll get the chance to ask him, but he decided against putting any of that money into social housing. And... Um, and look, I, I welcome your, your, your suggestions at the end because I feel you are in the position with the last two years and, and, and you, you understand how it works. And finally, I'd like to agree with what Deputy Wallace said, um, bringing it back to Parish Pump, I suppose. I live in Port Law and we have, um, I'm not sure, is it eight or ten new houses going ahead? We saw the plans on the last week. I know Deputy Coffey, our ex-Deputy Coffey, we saw the plans on the last week. Probably Senator by now. Is I don't think so. Uh, oh. I don't think so. Um, we, 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 we saw the plans on the last week of May. We saw the plans on the last week of May. These eight to ten houses are actually being built on, count, on, on a county council um, where there's already 20 houses. The land is there. There are no objections. It's 11 months now. The council passed it and a sod hasn't been turned. Now, I'm not a builder, but I would think if, if you're good to go, the money is there and there's 11 months after passing. Should a sod be turned at this stage? I don't know. I'm prepared to build them. <laughs> <laughs> you're prepared to build them. So... You, <laughs> Minister. So, thank you very much, Minister. You, so got, the, you got those five building. points, I presume, did you? Yeah. Thank you. Chair, uh, and I want to thank the Minister and the team for coming in to help us with our work. Uh, you will be aware that we are tasked to make recommendations in terms of housing and homelessness. Uh, and to do that, obviously, we need to understand the problem, the extent of it, and <coughs> all elements of it, and our programme of work will assist us in that. But the purpose of your visit today, obviously, is... Um, to tell us, look, is there a plan in place? Uh, is it adequate to address the problem? Is it timely enough? Uh, yes or no? 
we could spend time going back in terms of trying to analyse why the pipeline was empty, but it, it is and it was. So uh, if it's not timely, can it be, or parts of it be fast-tracked or accelerated? Uh, is it properly resourced? Uh, is funding a problem? Uh, and are all the players aligned in terms of the department, yourself, the local authorities, all of those el elements? Can we improve on the plan as a committee? And obviously we'll, we'll take notice of what you have to say on that. But most critically, look, what do we do while we are uh, waiting for the plan to be delivered, if we're talking about a two and a half to three year uh, lead, uh, lag time? And that's um, of critical importance in terms of the emergency that we all know is there. I just want to pick up on some elements of what you had to say, Minister. In terms of the construction industry not delivering, the, you know, and only delivering 50% of what they need to deliver, uh, you know, what elements of the plan, what, what has been done to address that? Part five, uh, the changes in part five um, from 20% to include uh, social and affordable, but the opportunity for local authorities to get money instead to the 10%, you know, the, the, the new regime, 10%. At a personal level, I would have been disappointed at that uh, in terms of not remaining at 20 per cent and maybe being 20 per cent social. But w do, you, do you feel that 10 per cent or that 20 per cent was a barrier to delivering? Uh, and if it was, like, are we seeing any improvements since then? Uh, in terms of, you talked about the need for local authorities to incentivise, uh, to be incentivised to provide land. Uh, to be incentivised to provide land, uh, how might that work? And can you maybe can you share any thoughts you might have on that for the future, to help us with our work? Um, the supply of affordable housing, um, you highlighted that, to where, where people are paying rent, uh, and yet because they're paying such high rents, they're not able to save for deposits. Uh, what do you see as the solution to that uh, at this stage? Um, you talked about any input cost reduction must go to, to uh, homeowners, and I would absolutely agree with you on that. But will that ever be possible, do you think, um, uh, given what, we, you know, in the past where there was grants, first time, I mean, it, it always ended up with, uh, you know, being added on to the cost of the, uh, the property. So is there, will there be ever be a solution to that? The residential tenancies, uh, you know, powers, um, our tenancy board in terms of where property has been sold, uh, what plans do you have to address that issue where, you know, uh, where the property has been sold? Is there anything can be done in that area? And the two and a half years lag, when we talked about that, you talked about the two and a half year lag, but you also then maybe, uh, while that lag is in place, you would kind of buying and leasing. But is, is that buying and leasing option, is that realistic given the supply shortage? And does that further impact on the uh, dysfunctional market? And uh, I think that's probably it. Thank you, thank Deputy. You. And finally, uh, Deputy Brophy. Uh, thank you. Um, I just really follow up because most of the, the key areas have been covered, and I'm not going to go back on them, but there is a couple of points that I wanted to particularly focus on. Um, the 10 to 15 percent social housing in relation to the local authorities, um, it is an area I think that has to be considered again, and no one is, is arguing for a 100 percent larger state bills or whatever, but it is, I think, a problem in terms of if local authorities are heavily involved in building that 10 to 15 percent, and I think that should be looked at uh, as a limit. I'd like to particularly um, just my own personal look, uh, think on this and your views on it. Um, the local authorities entering into the market buying houses on an even greater scale effectively, even at this moment, is beginning to create a distortion in that part of the market that they're trying to buy. And I certainly had the experience of being contacted by people who have lost on a number of occasions to the local authority. These are people who are desperate for a house themselves, who are trying to buy, who are trying to buy at a particular price point. It's a supply side issue. We need to be building. Um, and I, I, I know that, but if, if, if the local authorities enter too much on the buying side of it, there is a problem. That balance, I think, needs to be looked at. Um, the other thing that I would just like to say, and uh, I'm not looking to have a row with you, Minister, you know, I've met you on many occasions and respect you, but as a former councillor who has voted for every single part aid for housing when I was a councillor that came before my council, 
I don't like a terminology that refers to the use, particularly the word hypocrisy, on the part of public representatives who decide that for what they believe to be legitimate reasons, even if you said it was only some of them, you can be 100% in favour of the principle, and I think probably every single elected representative in Ireland is, and still have a right as a public representative to look at any issue that comes before you and make a decision. And it does not necessarily mean that because the officials of a council come back with a proposal that you look at and you genuinely decide you can't support that somehow or other you're being hypocritical. I don't. I, I think that was a, a, a wrong choice of word, and I think public representatives are struggling with this, particularly at council level, on er, uh, every single time this comes up. And I say that as someone who was quite willing to support the partites of my former council and believe that what we're doing is the right thing in, in, in the process. But I wouldn't classify my colleagues who necessarily um, oppose them um, as having any other motive than the fact that they believe that maybe that specific proposal in some way had a problem with it. Thank you. Uh, Minister, just be before you make your final replies, just one or two, two brief points. Uh, you might address specifically, uh, Deputy Ryan, where he talked about, is there, are there specific actions or steps we could do to front load any of the supply? I, I take what you're saying about, about process, but there is an emergency, and that's what Deputy Ryan was looking yeah, at, that, no you, that, that in particular. Deputy Brophy makes a point that just is worth reflecting, and I saw you nodding your head. You, you in your opening statement, talked about you know, people who might be earning the average industrial wage of 32,000 buying a 200,000 euro property. Mm -hmm. That's what's being bought by local authorities in the suburbs, and there is that comp competition in the Dublin market mm -hmm. between those houses going from potentially the private first-time buyers into social housing. And that's the point I think Deputy Brophy was trying to make, that ultimately there is a total supply and capacity <coughs> issue, and the know. balance. All I'm making the point is that there is a balance to be to be uh, met. That ultimately, uh, if local authorities have deeper pockets than first-time buyers, so you know, I, I, I'm not ruling it out, but I'm, I think you need to be conscious of the point that Deputy Brophy made. It's you know, we're, we're meeting people where that is affecting. And finally, Minister, the rapid build housing, which we've all learned not to call modular, we've been educated on that, the rapid build housing. Brain uh, control. Uh, uh, but you, you might just give a few comments in terms of its uh, value for money, uh, the cost effectiveness of it in comparison to maybe other type of housing. The floor is yours, Minister. Okay. And I'll do some recommendations at the end of the day. Yes. Okay, um, uh, I'll start at the end because it's freshest. Um, I'd never want to be fighting with you either, Colm, or, um, or Deputy um, Trophy. Um, but I stand over what I said. And it's not, um, I, I was very conditional in what I said. I didn't say it was everyone. And I actually respect everyone has a choice to make. And I respect everyone has the choice to make in every individual situation. And by the way, this isn't confined to local authority. In fact, it's probably might be more prevalent in other houses, <laughs> being honest with you, um, than in local authorities. Uh, I find that the majority, absolute overwhelming majority of cases, are people like yourself who are over there and other local authorities. In fact, I know of many, dare I say, uh, brave uh, councillors who will go in and face a fairly significant crowd and stand by their principle. And I know of many who did it recently. And I respect them, truly respect them. But it would be wrong of me to say that I haven't experienced the other case as well, where people are lecturing or waxing lyrical in relation to a certain area and the needs for housing and demanding it. And then when something comes up there, they have the opposite opinion. It's not just a generic one. I'm not talking about the generic case of someone opposing something because they believe in it and still demanding social housing. That's one thing. That's fine. But actually saying that in X place, we need social housing, getting this page spread in their local paper. And then something comes up two weeks later or a month later, and they're opposing it. Now, for me, that is contradictory, whatever way you look at it. Right? And I accept it's all individual cases. I'm not talking in generics. I'm not talking about uh, everyone. In fact, in the absolute majority of cases, this doesn't happen. But it does happen. And there's no point in saying that it, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it doesn't. I, I, I very much take your point in relation to... Um, in relation to local authorities entering the market, 
both of you, a few of you have said it. Um, to, like Deputy Ryan as well. Now, to be fair to them, uh, they don't enter the market in many different areas. For instance, where first-time buyers are, are actively looking, etc., etc. Uh, but there is, um, in fact, if they find out there is a first-time buyer, they generally pull out. They, um, but there is a, a, a balancing act here. The facts are that we will not have, and you know what the balancing act is, we will not have the supply coming on stream for a couple of years, so we do need to supply houses. So they need to use their judgment uh, there. And that's an element of trust here with local authorities using their judgment to go out there and to get. Uh, but I do take your point, uh, all of your points. It's a well-made point um, uh, because it obviously is pushing it up on others. But the rules around which, we, the guidelines around which to do it are basically... Um, you know, obviously not to hit first-time buyers and uh, to actually observe the area and ensure that they're, you know, from a judgment point of view, uh, that they do that. Um, um, the 10, 15 percent, that's for my successor, whoever that may be. Um, might be yourself, could be anyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, in relation to the rapids, uh, rapid bills, uh, th to be fair to Dublin City Council, and there's been an awful lot of commentary on this, you know, um, I think there's a huge, you know, we've plans for 500 of these. Um, there was a lot of learnings, Chair, from the first set of them, um, but they're excellent houses, and they're the fastest ever built. And to be frank about it, you do pay for time. I mean, you do pay for time. But there's another tender out at the moment. And I believe that that tender will obviously create other economies and other learnings which will uh, ensure that, that uh, there are um, even more savings. Uh, and also, uh, there's a greater competition, I understand, this time around. Last time around, there was only one responded. And like, it was either a case of do it or don't. So, well, you, you know, I mean, at this moment, as we're, as we're sitting here, 22 families are inside viewing their houses, which they've been allocated today. So... You know, we all talk about the need to do this. In fairness, there's 22 families, 22 families with children out there viewing them today. I understand this. It is today. Um, so, you know, that's the pendulum, um, uh, in, in fairness. But I believe that that will certainly work its way through and be, I, I think it's a very, very progressive thing to be done. Um, I'll try and run through the other ones. Um, in relation to Deputy Butler, uh, rent supplement, um, again, my commentary in relation to it, if you're having a housing minister, um, uh, there, is a, there is the whole issue in relation to um, the uh, protocol and the uh, 7,670 7, who came in through the upfills and the 2,030 through the threshold, um, which, who got an increase when they went through their uh, community welfare officer. Um, but this debate is a debate we've had loads of times. I mean, I've heard of you, varying views on it today. Do you go chasing the landlord, or do you do kind of similar to what the central bank rules on, does on in relation to, uh, to housing, or do you, um, do you leave it like that? Um, in relation to social health, you said about what the CCMA said. He's right, because it isn't just social housing. It is the EHBs doing their work. It is leasing and all of that and everything. But it's also in the private side. So it is a, it is a pie mix. Uh, to be fair. Uh, funding to extend houses, local authorities have certainly some discretion there in relation to uh, funding that they have, but maybe, maybe, uh, maybe uh, the, my um, successor should look at a specific scheme, scheme which will keep people in houses uh, that is just dedicated to extending houses. I would take that as, a, as a, another suggestion. Um, uh, yeah, I think Minister Noonan, will, when you invite him in, will deal with the, uh, uh, the Strategic Investment Fund. Um, uh, your last question, to be fair, because I've gone through them all now, was in relation to local authorities and Deputy Wallace going to jump in and, and build them. The local authorities have all the control there as regards getting them built as quickly as possible. And trust me, trust me when I say that we push them all the time to deliver units as quickly as possible. There was a major issue, though, when I took over this department, and it was this. They needed staff, and they needed them quickly. And that's why over 450 had to be allocated. Now, being honest, I obviously took... Are you saying there's no, no issue of money? 
that is available to, to, for them to build anything they want to build. But sure, you have the document in front of you, Deputy. Well, I, right. You have the document in front of you. Read well, it. They're telling me they're waiting on money. But they're not waiting on money. Sure. Well, I, mean, I mean, let's be honest about it now, because, you know, this is a myth. I, I'm only I'm telling you what I know, but, me. like, let's be... Look, look at Wexford. Wexford have £25.5 million. And, by the way, but these are thinking, if some other local authority doesn't spend their money, do we know... I will, I won't be doing it, but I would have, if I was there, been happy to move in more to Wexford. So they have the funding. In a, in a, in a bid to be uh, helpful to this process, the Minister has set out one side, and I know you have a difference of opinion, and that difference needs to be followed up. That's part of the, pro the, the process that we're engaging. Um, I just want to finish off, because uh, I don't want to leave Deputy Ryan. Jeez, if I left my own colleague out at the end, I'd be in awful trouble. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, he makes a very good point, and it's not because he's my colleague, but there is one issue at the end of all of this which your committee, I think, should bear in mind. Remember I spoke earlier on about all the various different uh, pieces of the jigsaw, the range of, of, of uh, components that, you know, if you can create a process whereby whoever is going to be in charge of this in the future will line them all up and make sure that they're all aligned and in in, in facing in the same direction. Um, we have done within our domain our lever, for want of a better phrase. But I think that is an important uh, issue um, into the future. Uh, I've answered the question in relation to acquisitions. Uh, the acquisitions in the short term are, the, you know, that is, and I know the issues in relation to supply. Uh, the construction industry, um, the issue in relation to the construction industry is the issue I spoke about earlier on in relation to land and the issues in relation to cost, 38%, uh, uh, which this committee is certainly going to have to make some recommendations on, I would, I would say. Um, on part five, the real issue there was, uh, on the 20%, uh, the fact that in many cases um, money was being taken, which I didn't agree with, and I stopped, because I totally disagreed with it. And secondly is, I changed it. It wasn't just a site. They actually now have to hand over the house. So it's real houses, right? But you know, in an expanding economy, if things change in the future, maybe that should change. But certainly in relation to getting building going, we needed to actually uh, address that. Um, in relation to incentivising land, I certainly think, and you know, I spoke about it earlier on, uh, there needs to be future proposals in relation to that. But may I just say this? It's often underestimated, the amount of land that local authorities have. It's often under... Now, it's not, it's not a panacea. There are some local authorities that do need to purchase land. But there is, and by the way, my colleague here has maps to show you if you need it. And actually, a lot of it you can find out online through our, webs to our own departmental website, uh, to be fair. Um, I have started a, a process for an affordable housing in relation to subsidising housing for, uh, to make it an affordable package. Uh, that was passed uh, through the Cabinet before uh, we finished up before the election. Uh, I think that needs to be expanded into the future. There's a fund there towards it. Um, in relation to... Um, the, uh, sorry, you asked a question in relation to Residential Tenancies Board. Um, it was in relation to what aspect of it? Selling where houses will be oh, sold, yes. etc. Oh, yeah, of, of course. I mean, to be frank, again, um, you know, <coughs> we did make the change that a landlord will have to sign a declaration in relation to uh, if they're selling a house. And if it's found out that they're not, then the Residential Tenancies Board um, can effectively come in then and deal with that. And the tenant actually can go back into the house. Um, but in relation to the overall aspect, which, to be fair, what many others here have, have asked about, um, there is an issue there in relation to the Constitution and Article 40, 43. And you did ask uh, a question in relation to buying and leasing? Yeah, I think you've dealt with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, if it's okay, Chair, can I... Um, oh, sorry. No, no, I was going to ask, but I think you're... you're no. Just a short proposal, Chair. Uh, 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 and the minister, I know he's done work on this already, it might be no harm to just go through it again, that, that the period in the private rental sector might be used by the local authorities as, in determining eligibility for a loan, that if there was a period of six months or a year or whatever in the private rental sector, instead of asking the questions, why were they, where were they, were they employed for the past three years, in which case they'd get a loan. Otherwise, otherwise if the, the point being made is that if the person is able to rent in the private sector, 
for, for the last four or five years on their own account without subsidisation, then they should be eligible for a loan, to my mind. And the other one is the shared ownership loans. The equity, the rental part of the equity, should become, and I know you've, you've looked at this, at the, at the, should become the subject of a tenant purchase scheme. Uh, in the same way as uh, the tenant purchase schemes have applied to the total value of a local authority house. Minister, if you want to respond, but more uh, in well, addition... I, I agree with him. It's probably my successor who should respond. Well, I think that may be the case. But uh, particularly at the outset, you indicated that you'd like to conclude the meeting. You had some per specific or particular recommendations or suggestions you wanted to put in front of the committee. And we'd yes, like to hear thank those. You, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, firstly, uh, I believe that we need, uh, as a country, to set output targets for total housing, uh, both social and private, collectively, together. Uh, I would strongly recommend that that be done as part of the recommendations coming out of this committee. Um, I think we, we need to uh, look at how, uh, in a constructive way, land is being managed and land made available for social housing. Um, and the management of that. Uh, I think we need a, effectively an asset management system nationwide in relation to uh, housing and how houses are managed. I think we need to look at the whole issue of the Article 43 in an open way. And I keep repeating this. It's not necessarily, I don't have any an answers. And I don't think anyone here has all the answers. But it is worth a discussion. I believe that. Um, I've. I absolutely um, believe that a housing minister would be a good idea if they had all the levers I spoke about at nauseam here. If they don't, well, frankly speaking, it's pure tokenism. And let that be, please, minuted, because it will be pure tokenism. Um, uh, the, um, we, we, the, I think I'm going to run through just a few um, other um, issues. Um, I believe choice-based letting should be brought in nationally for all local authorities. I believe we should have a national system. I think the one in Cork was an excellent example. In fact, I complimented the two individuals who ran it. Uh, but I believe that we should bring it in nationally. I think it's really evidence-based uh, and it's a good policy. Uh, we've started a, a process in relation to um, uh, where houses aren't just voids, but they're derelict. Um, I think that needs to be concluded, and that would bring back some more uh, stock. Um, in relation to um, the local authorities, I think they need to take some ownership and embrace uh, the changes that have been brought about as regards uh, building small, small amounts of units across the country. Uh, they now have the capacity to one step uh, to build uh, units uh, a, a small amount of units uh, across uh, the country. I believe um, in relation to, um, and we, we will have an assessment of this uh, through the local authorities aided by the um, census, the vacant houses around the country that are actually not being used. Um, I think um, there are a number of tax schemes there, whether it's the home renovations or the HAP RAS tax breaks that go to people. But if we, we, if we look at um, um, uh, some scheme in relation to uh, using uh, them, I think that would be a progressive uh, step. Um, you know, we have a, a situation in relation to housing which is, which is very difficult at the moment. So I absolutely believe, Chair, you have to look at the whole issue of how to cut the costs of building. Um, whether it's on the state side, which will have to, they'll have to lead on, but also on the developer side, also on the material side, the builder side, across the board, um, because that's a real issue. And particularly given the, uh, uh, the, the, the conditioning that's there as a result of the central bank rules, which I agree with. Um, I, I, believe there's a, um, I believe that there is a real issue from a political point of view in relation to ensuring that everyone from the body politic are actually uh, working together as regards at local authority level all the way up to here uh, to, in the provision of, of both private and social housing. Uh, in that sense, local authorities in particular um, will have to work 
on the policies and help ensure that they're implemented uh, to a greater uh, degree. <coughs> I think this, um, I think this um, committee uh, should make some recommendations. You'd be delighted to hear me say this in relation to the future role of NAMA. I believe that that would be something that this committee uh, should do and should uh, look at. We have to accept where NAMA came from. Um, we accept that the boundaries under which, which it was your government set up um, in relation to its commercial mandate. Um, but certainly um, there is assets, there is knowledge, etc., that needs to be utilised. And uh, I think that's something that um, needs to happen. Um, there are a number of leasing schemes or schemes that have been brought forward through my department um, in relation to in involving um, uh, uh, private uh, investment, which need to be, uh, I believe, concluded. Um, I've, it hasn't been raised, but I hoped it was, um, in relation to the credit unions. I met with the credit unions. I'd love to see the credit unions engaged. But let me just nail one myth. I'm not stopping it. They have to get sign-off from the regulator. When they get sign-off from the regulator, they come back and absolutely full engagement with my, whoever my successor is, I presume. But for instance, uh, uh, that needs to uh, uh, happen. I believe that the housing needs assessment, which will state how many people are in housing needs, will happen year on year, needs to manage the process and the decision making into the future. Because we're shooting in the dark with 2013 figures, and then with 2015 figures, which nobody knows whether they're accurate or not, because they're taken from local authorities for all the reasons I outlined earlier on um, as well. Thank, thank you, Minister, and thank you, colleagues. Just be, uh, before we suspend for the afternoon, I'd like to thank you and uh, your uh, staff for attending today and for your direct and forthright replies. And I suppose just from the committee's point of view, I want to be helpful. You made some specific suggestions. You talked there towards the end in relation to a future possible role for NAMA and you talked about the credit unions. Um, it is the intention of this committee to meet with both of those fairly shortly. And I don't want you to feel that what you've said has been taken in isolation it will be pursued and the response that comes from the credit unions or NAMA or whatever, with, whether it's the Minister for Finance or whoever, it, your replies and, and your responses were direct and helpful, but they're not taken in isolation. We will be challenging others on those. So it, it was a meaningful contribution and we appreciate it and thank you for your attendance today. And colleagues, we'll suspend till two o'clock. Thank you very much.